Well, I looked it up, and Shakespeare, who wrote even before that, wrote in the 1600s, had an active vocabulary of 54,000 words, 54,000. Today, you and me, us, in the United States, have an active vocabulary of 3,000 words. That's why when we read Shakespeare, we're like, what light through yonder? <laughs> yonder. Just put in a DVD. <laughs> Let's go to the monster truck rally. We'll just done with this. And it kind of made me feel bad because I presume that children, little kids probably in the 1600s have a bigger vocabulary than I have now, which means I wouldn't be able to read fairy tales to children in the 1600s because I'm not smart enough and they would be bigger. They'd have been like, uh, <clears throat> in time past, though not long ago, there lived pigs in stature little and number three, who being of an age, both entitled and inspired to seek their fortune, did set about to do thusly. When they had traveled a distance, pig numbered first spake, saying, Hearken, brethren, heed this tempestuous realm. Tarry we long from hearth and home. We shall fare, I fear, not well. <laughs> and so, being collectively agreed but individually impelled, the diminutive swine set about each to erect for himself an abode. Pig number one did construct his house from straw. Pig number two did likewise, though rather not from straw, instead from sticks. Meanwhile, unique in his imaginings, pig number three did erect as his domicile, stalwart and garish, a structure made from brick entirely. Ah, but soon there happened along, as is frequently the scenario in classic tale of protagonist pig or red-hooded child... A wolf. Carnivorous nature in full season, he called out to the straw ensconced swine, saying, Pray thee, little pig, grant me entrance. But pig one recalled with sage foreboding that he is mad who trusts in the tameness of a belly pinched wolf and responded immediately, Nay, it shall not be, indeed, not by wit or whisker jowl. <laughs> To this most expected response, the wolf replied immediately, Then steal thyself, little pig. Forthwith shall I endeavor, employing means both huffing and puffing, to dismantle yon flaxen fortress. <laughs> Whereupon there issued forth from the wolf an exhale of gale proportions <laughs> that quickly rendered straw hovel to dregs and dross and carried aloft piglet and shattered quarters both. Exposed now to claw and fang, Piglet One made haste, wolf in pursuit, to the stick festoon sanctum of peccary secondary. <laughs> Causing Pig Two to cry out in dismay, Well, this knocks my knickers! <laughs> Marshalling of feral wolf to my doorstep is nowhere among those endeavors amenable or congenial. A thousand pardons, begged one. It would seem the beast's baneful breath has purged me of home and sound judgment alike. <laughs> the malevolent blast of the wolf's exhale splattered second swine's shack and shortened his sanctimonious scolding simultaneously. <laughs> Lo and behold, squealed two, stand we now amid wooden wreckage, tremulous and vulnerable with nary a strap for eschewing the canine devourer looming in deadly proximity. <laughs> Strategy, exclaimed one, while tis noble to contemplate tactical particularities, pressed as we are with a time restraint forbidding detailed strategical conversations, I would urge we run! <laughs> Whether by their own fleet-footed competence or the wolf's windless attitude, the bantam porkers arrived at their ultimate kindred neighbor's inexpugnable brick ingress unscathed. Upon the third pig's door, with urgent hooves, they pounded, calling out, Unbar this entrance, and with haste we beseech thee! 
The third pig hailed from the American colonies. <laughs> and possessing a vocabulary substantially less robust than his impromptu visitors, <laughs> replied, say what? lest we fall forthwith to the ravenous appetency of yonder approaching carnivore. <laughs> Still confounded by their importunate words, Pig 3 did render ajar his portal, whereupon one and two spilled through and collapsed beyond his threshold enervated. <laughs> so, you all just wanted to come in? <laughs> you could have said that. Sinister hiss of the wolf could be heard again. Brady pigs, grant me entrance. The wolf said one and two. Wolf said three. What do you suppose he wants? <laughs> he seeks to gain purchase within. Indeed, he would occupy this very alcove where he but afforded the most meager of opportunity. Right. I'm just going to go ask him what he wants. <laughs> Under no circumstances, squeal two, flinging self bodily against portal. There is not to be gained a costing external opponent, save our own immediate demise. What did you say about my mama? House and occupants were again engulfed in a malevolent blast of wolfish wind. The foundation shook, the frame rattled, and lo, to the astonished eyes of Piglet, an encroaching scoundrel alike, stood the third pig's lodging undaunted. Aghast and befuddled, two queried of three. How does, against such relentless and torrential onslaught, this domicile endure? Pig three puffed out chest, tapped a hoof, to the hearth and responded, it's American made. <laughs>